My name is Jimmy Scroggins. I am the president of For Life Foundation, a nonprofit organization in Arizona. We host Easter extravaganzas, backpack giveaways, scholarships to graduating seniors, you name it, and it involves kids, we probably do it. Jimmy and I go way back, saw what he was doing in the community, and we volunteered, actually put up a booth and gave away free toothbrushes and, and toothpaste at his Christmas event. And it was a big success, and I got to know some of the people he was working with. And I just said, you know what, Jimmy is somebody I really respect and I wanna work with. I don't collaborate with a lot of individuals, but when a person like Kent calls, you pick up the phone. He is an amazing individual with a pure heart and he's done some amazing things for individuals and he is continuing to do great things for individuals. So any opportunity that I have to be a part of anything that he's doing, I'm on board 100%. My name is Shante Salisbury and I'm the Executive Director of Genesis Women's Center. Genesis Women's Center is a nonprofit organization that supports victims of domestic violence and homelessness. We are standing in a clothing store because it's a lot easier for individuals to come into the boutique, individuals being victims that are undergoing domestic violence because it makes them feel safer. It is not a police station. It is not a government building. It is not somewhere where they can feel like their abuser is lurking around the corner. The For Life Foundation also works to empower individuals that have gone through additional amounts of hardship. When I was 13 years old, I lost my mom to domestic violence. She was murdered, shot and killed, left to die in a driveway of her home by her boyfriend at the time. I was told by my mentor, she said, Shantae, find a niche. And I didn't exactly know what she meant. Um, I was not in a mindset of success at that time. And so eventually I said, you know what? I know what my niche is going to be. I am going to support victims of domestic violence because I am and was a victim of domestic violence. When I found out that my mom had passed away, being such a young kid, it, it just crushed me. My biological father and my mom worked together at the time. And so my mom met a new guy and uh, obviously domestic violence won. When I was younger, I was in the system. That means I was a ward of the state. I was in foster care. I was bounced around from family to family. My mother, she chose alcohol and drugs over me and my sister. It crushed me because I knew at that moment that I'd never get the opportunity to go home and say, hey mom, hey dad, ever again. I knew that I wouldn't get the opportunity to walk across the stage and graduate high school or graduate college and, and be able to look out into a crowd and say, hey mom, I did it. For years, it just crushed me trying to just adapt and navigate through the emotions. I've been in an abusive relationship twice. I kind of shut down all tears and emotion when I was younger. And so when I started to experience domestic violence um, in my late teens, I just kind of went into fight or flight mode to just hide and suppress everything is how I got away. It, it took a toll on my mind and a toll on my heart. And I know how, how much domestic violence can just absolutely destroy other individuals that aren't directly involved in the domestic violence part of the situation. I was abused for years. He chased me and he hit me and he broke my eye. So when Kent reached out to me about this opportunity, I was so excited. I would get another opportunity to help bring joy and happiness and hope to more individuals. It was so exciting and I was just extremely ecstatic about the opportunity. All right, we just pulled up to Ramona's neighborhood and we are here. She has no idea. I've been texting the boyfriend. She was taking a nap. We're gonna knock on the door. I've got Jimmy here. We've got the van set up. Everything's ready to go to start her smile makeover process right now. So let's head to the door and see what's up. We chose Ramona because of her heart. I, when I 
listened to Ramona's video. And when I read about her story and I saw the images of the aftermath of the domestic disputes that she had been through, it tugged at my heart so much because in that one moment, I saw glimpses of my mom being beaten, uh, being murdered. I saw glimpses of that. And so to now be able to look out at another woman and another individual that has had to endure such hardship and to see her heart shine through an email, to see her heart shine through a video and to just see how much passion she had for life, I knew she was the one. I am Ramona Patrick, and I'm one of the contestants for the Smile Contest. Well, I'm 34 years old. I have a six-year-old daughter. I came here in 97 from Bosnia. We escaped the war. And uh, I'm someone that loves to help others. Um, I used to be outgoing, but not anymore. Um, this smile has put a hold on my life because I just hate smiling, and um, I, I just I simply hate my smile, and I don't like to smile since I have a few missing teeth. <laughs> Once somebody starts to get into your head, it's harder to maneuver through life. Only imagine if somebody's controlling every aspect of your life and they're telling you that you're not good enough. At that point, you feel like you can't even get a good job because you're not good enough to do so. You feel like you can't prepare a good meal because you're not good enough to do so. You feel like you can't take care of your children correctly because you're just not good enough to do so. So once somebody gets inside of your head psychologically, you're just not good enough. And I think that is the hardest part to overcome when you're experiencing domestic violence. My actual teeth I lost due to domestic violence. I was abused by my daughter's father for years and I lost my teeth. And that's when I had to get new teeth and those didn't hold up pretty well at all. So now it's just a hold there. And it's hard to eat. It's hard to smile. Just go to an advocate. It's more so of embarrassment. They're in a shock of sadness. They are discouraged. Um, their self-esteem is low. When I lost the two teeth up top and the bottom, I just lost myself almost. Um, I didn't feel the same. I didn't feel beautiful. I felt like I couldn't watch people in the face and speak to them because of my smile. They're just stuck in an emotion of failure. Uh, what do I do from here? How do I get out of here? Who do I turn to? Where are the resources? How come there's not enough resources? She deserves this and more. She just can't help herself. She wants to help everybody, no matter what it is. After being with her several years, it's really truly who she is. She, um, she loves people, loves helping people, and has one of the biggest, greatest hearts you'll ever see. sweating man. I don't know if it's because I'm nervous or I'm hot. <laughs> no Hello? Way. Are you serious? Come outside so we can talk to you for a second. We can't see you. We can't see you. Oh my gosh. So we walk up to the door and Ramana comes outside. Uh, of course at first I think she thought we were some like telemarketers or something trying to sell some newspapers. I'm not really sure. Hi. Hi. Hey how are you? Good. Hi, so I'm Jimmy. After a second, she realized who we were and what we were doing here. Your submission, we, we saw your video and we absolutely, I mean, it just touched both of our hearts. And so we wanted to come and surprise you and tell you how happy we are that you're gonna be blessed with this opportunity. Can I hug you? Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. To see her get so emotional, <laughs> it was, um. It, it was it was uh, it was hard 
for me just for a second. I heard you were just asleep. We had to wake you up. I've been text, <laughs> texting Marcel. <laughs> it was it was hard almost for me to, to watch it. Um, again, because I come from that domestic violence background. And so to see her past light up in so many ways and to watch her stand there um, with that excitement and that joy almost to have a sense of relief and a sense of weight being dropped off of her as if the world has now said thank you for being an overcomer thank you for being a conqueror um it was it was a special moment for sure when are we gonna do it right now <laughs> no, right now we're gonna get started right now with a preview really yeah oh, okay. she's been through so much in life she just gets knocked down and and gets back up and just keeps trying I just love her tenacity. I love uh, her resilience. I love how she has such a beautiful heart. I just love being in her life. Your your story just tugged at my heart so much. It just absolutely just, just ripped at my heart. And so I can't express how much I appreciate you for continuing to be a fighter and a conqueror and an overcomer and um, how many people you are inspiring and you have absolutely no idea. A new smile for her is gonna be like a normal person getting on a rocket ship going to the moon. I can go out and work again and I can talk to someone clo in close proximity and I can look people in the eyes, most importantly, and speak to them instead of looking down all the time. So every day that you walk with your head held high is a day and an opportunity for someone else to use your story as momentum to keep on going and to get out of some of those tough situations that they might be in. So um, again, I, I appreciate you. You're my inspiration. I hope to tell him about you. Anytime I post anything, I'm like, really? well, the lines are just getting longer and longer. So, somehow we can support, but I watch you, your wife, like you guys are my inspiration. And your story, I tell him about everything you do. <laughs> thank you guys and thank you. For just accommodating us. I got that stroke. I got that stroke. I had to play it off. Yeah. It's gonna be everything for her. I really, truly feel like, you know, she uh, she wants to do nonprofit. She wants to help. Like I said, in and everybody, and this will add to her confidence. She is just gonna be well on her way. This is just gonna be a great platform for her to accomplish the goals and dreams that she has in life. I hope that this new smile helps Ramona just feel more confident and more secure in her presence. We know what she looks like on the inside and I am sure I speak for everyone that is involved in her life and in saying that we love that. So we hope that that inside the love and that inside spirit can now be displayed on the outside when she smiles at everybody that she walks by. A lot of hard work. Preview's over, let me sit you up here. Oh man, Ramona. <laughs> Ramona, the change was instant. As soon as she got even the smile preview, she was like, look at me go. <laughs> it can't hide it. Hold the mirror out. Yeah, you're not supposed to hide it anymore. <laughs> I get to keep things right. Right. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. I'm not going to stop smiling. She has so much smile confidence and she just exudes that confidence. I think for some people, they wear their emotions on their sleeve. That's Ramona. She is loud. She was telling everybody about it right away and loud in a good way. You know, she was just very proud of her teeth. I love them. I'll take this off for you. I just want to go run around. All in a day's work. <laughs> smile success. Beautiful. Amazing. He knows what he's doing. Now that she has the final teeth, she can chew. She's ready to take on the world. She wants to start her own drug rehab center to get people off the streets. She just feels like she can do anything. So for Ramona, I think it's been a, it's been amazing to see her transformation, but it was pretty instant. The preview went great. It was a little challenging because she had a couple missing teeth, but we're going to be able to bridge those gaps and honestly, uh, just make it look so natural and real yeah. Yeah. that people won't even know that you had to ever lost teeth. Yeah. We really are making a huge difference in people's lives and relieving a lot of stress and anxiety. 
and helping people get into their optimal health. It all starts right here in the, with the smile and with the teeth and then everything else kind of follows, I feel like. Um, so it's giving her all that confidence. <laughs> what do you think about the color? I love, I love it. This is our rough draft preview. You go. My heart is gonna stop. So after working with Ramona, she let me know that she has another friend who was dealing with domestic violence who had it even worse off than her. We're giving another smile makeover to a single mom. It's her hairstylist, Megan. And so when I heard Megan's story about the domestic violence, I just thought, I was like, wow, this is so cool that Ramona has actually received this gift and now she wants to give it to somebody else. I'm be I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep for a week. I feel like I won all over. You don't Ramona's, understand how Ramona's much paying it forward. Ramona actually came up with this idea. So we thought that Ramona could just kind of casually go in one day to get her hair done and her boss is gonna be in on it too and actually wants to donate her smile. And so we're gonna be there and Ramona's gonna be sitting like she's gonna get her hair done. And then all of a sudden we're gonna pull up in the shuttle and walk in and, and surprise her that way. So she's gonna get her preview smile done at work. Excuse me. My name is Leanna Allison. My daughter, Megan, has been selected for a teeth makeover. And, uh, it's a very emotional time for the family. We don't have sex anymore. She's been through so much uh, with the domestic violence. Thank you. Megan, we are so happy for you. As a mother, it is very, very difficult. You try to do everything you can to protect your family. We're all here for you. We've got your kid. Bring the kiddos in. Unfortunately, an incident happened last year and uh, something that we never really expected. My grandkids um, father had came and dropped them off at the salon and they were supposed to go to a trick or treat um, thing at the church. And uh, the situation just continued to escalate. And uh, unfortunately he chased her down uh, with the car multiple times to the point to where my youngest grandson said, mommy, mommy, daddy's coming. Um, they ended up being stopping behind uh, the salon here on a side street and things continued to escalate. And then um, she got out of the car and then he came around and uh, punched her and pretty much knocked her out. Personally, she was in sales when it comes to anything. And I was just like, man, and I just kind of threw her like a couple pictures and stuff. And then that's when she was like, but let me ask you a question. And then I asked her, was she a DV mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. survivor? And then she sent me those pictures. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it just, I relived my situation all over again. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think your comment was, there's somebody who had it worse than me. Worse than me, yeah. Yeah, there, and, there, isn't there it? always is. There's always worship. somebody yeah. that, I mean, there's people that lost their lives, right? Yeah. That aren't with us now. And it's mm -hmm. just like. We need to bring awareness to this because violence, there's no room for violence in our society. Yes. Yeah, I actually lost a girlfriend that she was murdered so because of because of it, violence, you know, yeah. yeah. That was an incident that happened back home in Illinois. Um, she was, she actually had a restraining order uh, against um, her ex-boyfriend at the time and uh, she thought she would be safe to go home to get a few things during the day. And unfortunately, he was there. He shot her, basically left her for dead, started the house on fire. And then <clears throat> shot himself. And uh, unfortunately, she didn't make it out. There were scratches on the back door um, from her fingerprints trying to fingers trying to get out. It's just it's for real. Please just speak up. It's a difficult time and just you know that your family and loved ones are out there to support you. I know it's scary. It's very, very scary. So speak up. Do I feel like people ever fully recover from domestic violence? I will say that's an easy no. If my daughter was a victim of domestic violence, uh, the first thing I would feel is, is rage. 
then I would get into uh, some serious sadness because I see these victims and what it's done to their life and, and the ripple effect through their entire life with their self-confidence and their self-image just completely ruined. It's just completely shattered. And so then I would just, then at that point, just feel so much love for, for my daughter and then what can I do? you know, as a father to try to give her back that confidence that she's lost forever. So you're trapped in a lot of mental um, situations and trauma, and that looks like um, a lot of healing, a lot of healing, a lot of counseling. It would be a whole lifelong journey to get that confidence back. You will never come out of domestic violence as far as what has been trapped in your mind mentally behind your trauma but you can overcome what it is that you have experienced within the domestic violence situation. Crazy world, right? Yeah. And yeah, we, all just, sure. we all just need to take care of each other. Yeah, that's, yeah. More women empowering like, other women. Women yeah. empowering yes. other women. Yes, that's my mission now. Like your guys' situation, it's so hard. And a lot of them don't want to speak up because either they're embarrassed or scared. Scared. Because my pictures were posted all over the internet after the incident. So not only was I embarrassed publicly, mm -hmm. I almost lost my life that night, so. I just, I just feel um, renewed with a smile because I feel like uh, it's, it's just a new me because I can, I can change my hair, change my clothes, but you know, um, something as permanent as your smile, like that, uh, that changes you for life. When I tell you, my heart was going to explode. Like, it felt like winning the lottery, but even better. <laughs> a smile can go a long way. And so just having pretty teeth, I mean, it's kind of like having somebody that, that has like a funny laugh. Like, it makes you laugh too. I was in disbelief. I, I, I never knew that my smile could ever look the way it does now. She's gonna just have that beautiful smile and that twinkle in her eye, and that's amazing to me. Having like a pretty smile and being able to open my mouth and show the world, like I feel like I'm gonna get a lot more smiles back now. Like now it's like, I don't put makeup on. It, I have my smile, so that's all I need. Being able to start over and have a new smile, it just feels so good. My confidence is so much higher. It used to be at like negative 10, now it's like at a 20 express uh, joy as a tear for her as well because she truly didn't know and she was shocked. You could just see the, uh, the excitement and um, the joy. It was overwhelming. It was great. It's good for the soul. Thank you. I, I couldn't thank you enough. Um, you guys just changed my world and uh, I'm so much happier now. I just want to say how grateful I am for everything that you've done for me. Um, just all the work that you and your team put in. You guys are my saviors. You guys are seriously someone that I look up to. Like, I, I, I couldn't thank him enough. I'm just, I'm grateful for the whole experience because there's no way that I would have ever been able to get the funds together to be able to do a whole smile makeover. I mean, that is just surreal that I, I won that when that's been my biggest stressor in my life. So um, I'm just eternally grateful. When they surprised me, I was crying. I wanted to hug them. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And I constantly am trying to get people to donate because they've made such a huge difference in my life. And without them, I wouldn't be here. I, I wouldn't be here without them today. My advice for someone who is aware of someone that might be experiencing domestic violence is to not be overbearing. Unfortunately, um, I do not, even if I know that someone is experiencing domestic violence, I will not say anything to them because you have to allow a thriver to come out of their situation on their own. It's, it's, it's a hard thing to try to get past. It's a hard thing to try to conquer because it's it stems from such pain and such hardship and then the lifelong journey to trying to get back to who you were before that hardship is, it's a lot.
I would tell them get out when you see the first time the first sign of the domestic violence don't stay because it could end up bad and you not living anymore it's not worth it so the best thing is just be there be that listening ear allow them to feel comfortable with you so therefore they can come out and open up and share some of what they're doing but you definitely want to be a good listener first um, you are worth it um, there is people out there that, that will help you and it it takes for me to tell my story, I will. If it changes at least one person's life, that's all I care about. It's better to use the term thriver over victim because there's a stigma already circling around victims of domestic violence. So anytime you categorize the word victim to something as sad or embarrassing as domestic violence, that is what keeps that person inside of that darkness. They will not come out of that darkness because they do not want to be labeled a victim. You, you are beautiful the way you are. And there is people out there like Dr. Kent and Jimmy that could change your life. Um, don't give up. Keep trying. Keep pushing like Jimmy says. And if it wasn't for them too, I wouldn't have kept pushing. If it wasn't for Jimmy and seeing his constantly, you know, boosting people up, I wouldn't have kept going. There's so many times after my DV incident, I, I didn't want to live anymore before. But now I, I, I'm so full of joy in life that I just want to make a difference and hopefully I can. Having something like that happen to me at such a young age, uh, it did something to me very special. And it's, it's, it's interesting that I can say that after all these years, but I say it's special because it, it taught me the importance of time. It taught me that we don't have the maximum amount of time to just set goals and dreams and hopes for ourselves. And then for some reason still waste that time and still think that that uh, success is supposed to still come to us, that life and love is supposed to still be there. I hope that for any individuals out there watching this right now, I hope that you can feel me. I, I, I hope that you can feel my heart and, and feel my words, the vibration in my voice when I tell you that there is no place for domestic violence. The damage that it did to an entire family of individuals that had to go on years and years and years later. I am 33 and there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about my mom, that I don't talk to my mom, that I don't want my mom to be present. And so I truly hope that for every individual out there right now watching this episode, that you take a moment and just think about something that you can do to help an individual that may be going through a current domestic violence situation or an individual that has been through a domestic violence situation. How can you personally decide to go the extra mile to help them in any way? When I started the charity and I started seeing all of these people in need, what I really wanted to do for them is give them an over-the-top experience and a complete smile makeover. What I realized right away is that I was falling short because I am one person and Kent Dental is only one clinic and I only have certain skills. I needed to include other doctors that had skills far beyond what I was capable of. Hi, I'm Chase Osman with Lifeguard Anesthesia. I'm the original founder and co-partner and uh, started Lifeguard Anesthesia in 2017 here in Arizona. My name is Dr. Justin Waters. I am a general dentist here in the Valley. My name is Cody Burke. I am one of the managing partners and the chief operation officer for Lifeguard Anesthesia. This is Amazon from Danny Dental Studio. Danny is my wife, so we both owners of our establishment. We started the business back in 93, so next year will be 30 years. My name is Vishy Brumand. I'm an oral surgeon here in Desert Ridge, and I opened the Desert Ridge Oral Surgery Institute. It's been a life changer for me. I never thought 
that I do so much here, you know, we decided that we'd open up a teaching center, train a lot of other doctors on zygomatic implants, all on a floor, and I'm in charge of training the residents at the University of Arizona Banner University Medical Center. Lifeguard Anesthesia is a group of all CRNAs. We have six CRNA providers that do full-time dental anesthesia. The unique thing about that is, is that typically a medical provider is not going to do anesthesia in a dental office full-time. While they have the experience to take care of sicker, critically ill patients and patients with multiple comorbidities, which this market demands because a lot of patients that are getting full arch work and a lot of dental implants have a lot of different comorbidities going on, often we're stuck in the hospital working and we might be able to get out of the hospital one or two days a week to do some dental procedures. What I wanted to do was take the, the really skilled providers out of the hospital setting and put them in the dental setting and create an exclusive mobile dental anesthesia business. So the Tuttle Shuttle is the embodiment of what any general dentist wants to do. We love doing smile makeovers and to be able to give that to somebody, especially people who are hard to love, it's kind of like treating these people with dignity and compassion and things that we would want for our own family members and such. It was kind of my background in fundraising and throwing charitable events that kind of linked Dr. Tell and I when I heard the vision of what he was doing, being that we are an all mobile dental anesthesia and oral surgery practice. Um, it aligned really well with our vision and what we like to do because we already do pro bono cases with a lot of our clients for underprivileged people. So just hearing the vision of what he was looking to do and knowing him as a person just made us really want to be a part of it. When some dentists do get a charity case, they treat it like a charity case. And for me, I would want any charity patient to feel like they're getting the VIP treatment. And that's really what we try to do with the Tuttle Shuttle. Our goal is to be a leader in the industry. I'm one of the most sophisticated, uh, technically knowledgeable and technical support dental laboratory in the country. And we're already doing it. We have uh, the latest technology. We constantly cross-training our people in customer service and technology to support our clients. We provide chair site assistance like no, nobody else and it gives, gives us a great honor to be part of the team. Before COVID, we were very much involved in different other organizations similar to that. But, you know, with COVID, everything crumpled down and now we're going back on our feet like everybody else and we definitely want to be part of something that changes people's life especially the people can afford it and they really, really uh, make them happy when we're done. There's not many surgeons in the country that do zygomatic implants because of the degree of difficulty. You know, I go through the mouth into the cheekbones, the zygomatic bones. The bone is very plentiful there. It's always dense and available. So you and I can't tell the difference. When they smile, they've got a beautiful set of teeth that are attached to the implants. They can chew, eat, smile, and live normal lives again. I really love being an artist. I really love doing the pretty veneers and stuff like that, but I needed a, an expert surgeon, Dr. Bromond. I needed another surgeon, Dr. Waters. I needed a sedation team, lifeguard anesthesia. I needed these other people, and that's really what it takes to make miracles happen, is it takes a team. One person is never gonna change the world. You gotta have a team, and through a team, you win championships, right? And dentistry is definitely a team sport.